Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and today we're going to have something quite exciting. We're going to be talking about the upcoming cards. I'm going to rank them in terms of where I think they are going to end up being, um, how impactful they're going to be in the meta and which ones you should be looking out for, and which ones you should try get. Obviously this is data mine, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt. You know, these things are subject to change and it is not uncommon for some of these things to get tweaked or completely even reworked in some cases when they are officially released. But for now, this is about as much as we know about these upcoming cards for the next two months. And I'm going to go ahead and discuss them, break them down quickly, um, go over them, and then I'm going to rank them in terms of where I believe they will be in terms of their impact the meta and if you should get them or not. So first of all, we're going to have the season pass card. This is going to be coming up for next month. This one is going to be Blink. So what Blink is going to be ending up doing is she's going to swap the last card you played with a higher cost card from your deck. Now, this is a lot of synergy. We think of this card almost as in a way as like a lockjaw kind of for unrevealed deck. So you can use this, let's say with Electro. You play Electro turn three, and then you can play Blink on turn four send the electro back to the deck which is great because the electro obviously has a negative downside after the on reveal the ongoing effect is bad so if you can get rid of it that's great and then you get a higher cost card and in a ramp deck you can have a lot of high cost cards in your deck and that's gonna be very very good value you can also use this thing with cards that have strong on reveals but low bodies so things like white tiger will be great things like iron heart could be decent something that has like a small body that has a good on reveal and then you can flip them out in your deck and replace them so this card is going to be kind of like a lockjaw now as a season pass card this is going to be quite good and I think this is definitely one you want to keep your eye out for. Moving on now, we're going to have Sage. So Sage is going to be a little bit of an interesting one. She's going to be plus two power for each different power among all other cards here. So I believe this also counts for your opponent's side of the board because it says for every different cards here. So this one can get plus two power from all the cards on your side and also all the cards from your opponent's side that have different power. So, you know, this could play for a lot of points. Um, you know, in theory, this can play for what? Um, two, four, six plus opponent has potentially another four cars in that lane so another eight there so it can play for like 15 ish points right but obviously you need to have different power everywhere and that can be a little bit situational so you can't really control what your opponents do so it's also a little bit tricky there maybe you can set things up with things like polaris and maybe things like arrow but for the most part this is going to be i don't know i kind of look at this card like a slightly different version of captain america so to speak can play for a lot of points but again it's also a very situational card so not sure how i feel about this one then we have nocturne now nocturne is gonna be great in a cerebra 5 deck i'll tell you why so you can move this card once and when this card is moved, replace its location with a random new one. So it's kind of like a Scarlet Witch with a Nightcrawler in one. This is going to be very good in the Cerebra 5 deck because one thing Cerebra 5 decks have struggled with is location manipulation. All the location manipulation cards are typically like three-ish power. So they can't really, it doesn't really fit the deck very well. So they've kind of never really had something to use for location alteration. But I think in a Cerebra 5 deck, this is finally going to give Cerebra 5 a card that it can change locations whilst also being a five-point card itself. So this should be very, very good in Cerebra 5. Outside of Cerebra 5, I mean, there's obviously some synergy with, let's say, a Silky Smooth deck decks that like Craven, also Angela and also can get good views of this because you can play it and then move it away so also sets up a miles morales so should also be decent in like a silky smooth type of deck so far three five stats not bad and also with a location um manipulation will make it quite valuable for some clutch um location changes then moving on to sasquatch and this one is actually what i'm very excited for personally it's going to cost one less for each card you played in the last turn so this is going to be very good in potentially a deck uh, like bounce bounce can play a lot of cards in one turn sometimes and this can end up being quite a cheap card you know bounce very often you can make it on turn five that they play especially when you use things like for example mysterio which can play three cards in one turn you combine mysterio with a few other cards and this can end up playing for almost free maybe in some cases it will be completely free but a 610 does play the shang chi obviously at 10 powers so you got to watch out for that but it's going to give you a nice big body you can throw down on the final turn and it can be very very cheap considering that you you know the bounce deck or any deck for that matter that can play many many cards in one turn which there are a few that do end up doing that uh, this can play for a lot of value then moving on now to namora this one's also going to be quite an interesting one so she's going to help kind of set this whole archetype you know there's kind of cards in snap that they want to be left alone they're kind of like being isolated from the rest of the world you know you have things like atoma you have things like um namor you have things like orca basically all the fish people <laughs> they really like being alone and what namora is going to do is she's going to give every card that's alone on the location plus five now she's on reveal so they don't have to be left alone so in other words if you let's say play dr doom right and these 
there's a Doctor Doom on the board and, you know, all the Doom bots are alone and you play Nomura, she'll buff up all those Doom bots and then she will also, if you play another card there afterwards, it's fine, you don't lose the buff. It's not an ongoing effect. So you, you get the value and you can move on. Now, this can be also very good in a ramp deck because ramp decks can potentially, you know, they don't really play a whole lot of cards. They kind of go Electro, then they play Vision and then they play, you could maybe play Nomura, buff those cards up. Then you could, I don't know, play Odin and Nomura. It just gives you another way to kind of, she kind of likes plays like a Doctor Doom in a way. Um, she can play for 15 points, which is basically Doctor Doom value. She's only five cost though she's even cheaper than dr doom but she can be a nice way in a ramp deck to get some nice value now imagine a situation where you go electro to doom and then you play um namora and she buffs up the doom bots and then you play odin on both namora and dr doom um then namora will buff up the things again um, but she can be quite a lot of value. So like I said, this will probably work very well in a ramp deck. Maybe you'll play um, Orca or even Namor in a ramp deck to make use of this card because those cards like being left alone anyway. Although I'm still not entirely sure if she's going to make those cards see play. I still think those cards are kind of a bit, the, the, the downside is quite harsh. But she does give you um, some possibilities in another ramp deck. So we're going to have some more ramp synergy here. The same as Blink. So it looks like we're going to get some um, ramp plus Cerebra 5 and also a little bit of bounce synergy here so that is going to be the cards for maze month then moving on now to um to june the season pass card is going to be gilgamesh now gilgamesh is going to be another very interesting card it's going to be on reveal plus two for each of your other cards in play with increased power so in other words any other card that has been buffed it's got green numbers they will allow gilgamesh to plus two power for every other card very big card himself so if you imagine a board state that is full and you play blue marvel blue marvel will buff everything on the board which means gilgamesh is going to get insane value from blue marvel it also will get good value from things like patriot perhaps um so i could definitely see gilgamesh being fit in a maybe patriot um blue marvel deck or a kazoo deck because uh, kazoo decks obviously they also play blue marvel and kazar which will give you a lot of green strength which will give gilgamesh great value so any deck that gets a lot of buffs which i think will typically be also bounce in a way could be because bounce has a lot of green numbers as well they have you know angela elsa they have kitty pride they have bishop there's so many ways that that deck will get green power could be decent a bounce deck as well but i think this is going to really shine decks that play blue marvel which is typically going to be patriot and kazoo deck um then moving on to thena now thena is going to be some more potential bounce support so she's going to be plus three power if you played exactly two cards so you can't play more you can't play three cards you can't play four cards you can't play one card you can play exactly two cards so every turn you play just two cards she will get plus three power so this can in theory be like a stronger angela but also an angela with a bit of a harsher condition um because plus two cards exactly that is a condition that's not that easy to me sometimes no a bit harder i would say than angela but obviously the reward is a bit high you get plus three power and she also has one extra starting power as well so i think this will do quite well in decks that play kitty pride a lot kitty pride decks are typically gonna be playing two cards on a turn most turns kitty pride decks bounce decks decks that are going to end up playing exactly two cards a turn i think thena will be great value there and you know she triggers just twice she's already playing as a seven two which is insane so just two triggers and she's already good so should be pretty good to see um what she can do in those decks so we've got some more potential bounce support coming up here then we're gonna have cersei now cersei is gonna be a very weird one she's gonna transform your other cards here into random cards that cost one more this is going to be i don't know it's gonna be a bit of a difficult one to evaluate because it's a very high rng card i mean you could use this on lower cost cards like two cost cards into three cost cards i think that's probably gonna be where she's gonna get the most value you know five cost cards there, there are a lot of six cost cards that are situationally very good but can be very very bad sometimes so transforming five cost cards to six cost cards and yeah, i don't think it's gonna be that great four cost cards same situation to five cost cards but i think a lot of the two cost cards um will do a lot better as three cost cards so i think this will do potentially good on the lower side of things um overall though this card I don't know. I mean, it's a 5-7, which is a bad stat line. You know, it doesn't have to do all that much to find value because it's already got 5-7 base stats. So, you know, if you get one or two good things, it's already good. But then again, you can also get negatively affected things. So, you know, it's hard to plan and know exactly what this card will do. Um, next up, Fastos. Now, this one, I think, is just 
completely insane. This card is like broken. I I'm almost certain this card is going to get adjusted before it comes out. Fastest is going to be give each card in your deck minus one cost or plus two power. That's insane. It's a 3-3, three, three, which means it has a silver surface energy because the three cost card. It is also going to have even more silver surface energy because it's going to potentially buff up cards in your deck, which means things like Brood and things like Absorbing Man and things like but Sebastian Shaw get buffed up. They all get extra value from that. And I mean, 3-3, three, three, that just minus one cost to everything in your deck and or, or plus two power. That's crazy. I think this card is going to be very, very busted. I would expect to get changed here. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll stay the same. Like this seems insane to me. So we'll have to see. This one I would say take with a grain of salt because likely to change. And then last turn, we have probably the wackiest card we've ever seen in Snap. This one is going to be completely insane. I love it. It's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be a meme. It looks kind of meme -y, but it looks also just scary. But <laughs> I don't know. This card is going to be an exciting one. It's going to say at the start of your game, give you one max energy so you get one max energy for the rest of the game that's crazy right but it's going to shuffle 12 random cards into your deck so you're going to have 12 more cards in your deck so you're going to have a 24 four card deck um half of the deck will be your starting deck and the other half will be randomly created from arisham so i hope you guys like district x because this is basically a self-inflicted district x or at least half a district x so to speak but of course the upside you get plus one max energy for the rest of the game that's pretty good having one plus max energy basically a free electric the downside is you have 12 random cards in your deck so i don't know this card i think is going to be used in very greedy decks people are going to probably play very very high cost decks with a lot of um you know five and six cost cards and then use the 12 randomly created cards as their like filler cards the, the low cost cards that you play in between yeah i don't know how to value this one honestly because this one is going to be only time will tell but it's going to be fun I, i'm sure this card is going to be going to make for some great content how good it will be i don't actually know but speaking of how good it will be let's get into the um the tier list and let's let's rank things what we think everything will probably sit up so i'm gonna put blink as probably a must buy the reason why i'm gonna put blink in a must buy is because a she's a season pass card and that already is i think something that makes her a lot more valuable because season passes are typically the best value you get in snap and i typically want to um, recommend people buy season passes cards even if they're bad but this is not a bad card i think she's gonna be good and she's a season pass card which means you get the best value from it and it's also just a good card so I think you should definitely get um, Blink. Also, the decks you support, ramp decks are relatively cheap. They're not that many series four and five cards in ramp decks, which means you can play relatively budget friendly of, of Blink decks if you have um, series three or mostly series three complete. You can build a pretty competitive Blink deck, I would assume. So I'm going to put it as a must buy. Then moving on now to Sasquatch. Sasquatch is going to be, I think, very good in a bounce deck. I think it will bounce right now, isn't exactly in the best of spots. So uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to suddenly make bounce good, not alone. But there are other cards that are also going to be making bounce a little bit of support with things like Thena as well. So it could end up shaking up the meta, but I don't know how likely it is going to be to completely shake the meta up itself. I think it's good to get this card if you if you want the other cards in the spotlight cash and you um, also want Sasquatch. So if you see a spotlight cache, you go, oh, I want that card, that card, and Sasquatch is also here, then I think go for it because I think it, it looks like a decent card, but Bounce, not exactly the best of positions right now. Um, it's not bad, but it's not great. But Sasquatch and obviously also things like Thena might help make that a little bit better. Next up, we have Nomura. Now, Nomura is going to be and also an interesting one i think that is i don't know nomura i think might combine with things like blink which is also going to help support a on reveal deck she might end up being actually quite good i kind of want to say she's likely to change the meta because together with blink i think we might start seeing a lot more ramp decks which in theory would change the meta but it's hard to say just yet so I don't know. I think I'm going to put it at... Like, get if the other cards in your spotlight cash are worth it to you. So if the other spotlight cash um, cards with the Mora are, are cards you're interested in, then I think get her. If not, um, I think you could maybe just skip her. Then we have Nocturne. Now, Nocturne is going to be in a very niche deck, I think. Well, two decks I can think of. Cerebra 5 or you're going to see possibly in a... Um, maybe like a Silky Smooth deck, I think could make good use of Nocturne. Other than that, I think that's about it. I think she will be a 
decent card, especially in Serial 5, but nothing game changing. I would say only get it if you if you have excess resources or if you really want any of the other cards in the spotlight cache with Nocturne, then I think maybe get it. Otherwise, it's not super important. I think you can definitely skip if you don't want to. Then we have Sage. Now, Sage so far, because of how situational it is, I don't love the look of this card. Like, it seems a little bit too situational for my liking. Um, it also is going to end up playing very tall if it gets too much value, which makes it shank cheerable. But if it doesn't get too much value, then it's what's the point? So I don't know. I don't really like the way this card is looking. It just you can't really control what your opponent's doing on their side of the board. They can avoid this card. And I don't think it's going to be that amazing. At least not as a 4-1. Maybe if they change the stats around, maybe it might end up uh, being a bit better. But as of right now, I'll probably skip this card. It kind of looks a bit weak to me, but maybe they'll change. Then moving on to Arishim. Now, Arishim, I don't even know how to put this one, honestly. This one is... It's going to be a fun card. That's for sure. It's going to be very, very fun. But it's also going to be very, very meme -y. I don't know if it's going to be competitive. It's, it's so hard to tell without playing it. So I'm probably going to say only get it if you have excess resources. And if you want to have some fun, like this definitely looks like a fun card. I don't know if it's going to be competitive, but it looks like you could have some fun. It's kind of like almost like draft in a way. Not really because draft, you get to pick at least what cards you get. This doesn't, you don't get to pick, but you know, it kind of gives you like a way of playing draft. You get a different deck every game and it can be fun to experiment with different decks every other game. Um, but again, that is going to introduce a whole lot of RNG and you know, it's not going to be very consistent, I think, but it should be a, a bit of fun. So I'm going to put it at only get if you have excess resources or if you really want the other card in the spotlight or if you just really want a meme. If you want to have some fun, go for it. Then moving on now to Thinner. Now, Thinner is going to be, I think, a pretty decent card in a bounce deck, potentially. But if you don't, I mean, she's not also going to be bad in, in, in just bounce. It's also going to be other cards as well. Um, any deck that plays Kitty Pryde, I think will get good use of Thinner. And she might end up um, pushing more for bounce archetypes more cards that are playing kitty plus also which i really starting to see a lot of play you know you also have things like loki right now playing kitty and elsa and um angela and whatnot so i think she might end up pushing um bounce decks quite a lot so i'm gonna put her in like to change the meta because you know with with another support card to a very strong package already you might see a lot more um bounce decks starting to pop up with thena i think she looks like she's a pretty strong card i mean you see things like angela right angela when they changed or they when they rebuffed angela it already has changed the meta quite a bit now that angela's back you're starting to see a lot more kitty pride and also back the meta and it changed the meta. So I think Thena will um, likely push that more and actually help change meta as well. Then we have Cersei. Now Cersei is another one that I'm, I don't know. It just looks very high RNG and I don't, think looks that great to me i mean it looks like it's going to be another card that you can't really predict what's going to happen so it's hard for me to value without playing it myself i also can't really think of any decks right off the bat that you want to play cersei which already is a pretty big negative that I, I can't even think of a deck to to fit her in so i'm gonna for now put an easy skip it depends maybe they'll change the numbers around and she might end up moving up a tier or two but for now as she is right now i'll probably skip this card if you see it in the spotlight caches i'm not too concerned about it then and moving on now to Gilgamesh. Now, Gilgamesh, I think, is going to be a very solid card. It's a season pass card again. And season pass cards, once again, I always recommend getting them, especially one that does look decent. I think Gilgamesh is going to be quite a solid card. I think it is going to probably shift the meta a bit because it's going to push decks like um, Blue Marvel, things like... Um, it's going to push things like, for example, Kazoo decks, so Patriot decks, get a nice big finisher, and I think this will fit those decks quite well. So I think it's likely to change the meta. It's going to push two archetypes that right now are struggling, and I think this will make them a lot better. So we might see the meta start shifting a bit when Gilgamesh comes out, and I'm going to put this as a likely to change the meta um, on the tier list. Then moving on to the last card, fastest. I mean, this is just a no-brainer. If this card stays the same way, must buy. If this card is going to be 3-3 three, three with these, these numbers, get the card it's broken if they don't change it it's just busted get this card it might change obviously but if it doesn't this card is going to be insane so i think that's where i'd rank these cards for the upcoming months let me know if you agree if you guys do let me know what you think of um these new cards which ones are you most excited for let me know in the comment section below if there's any that you agree with if you disagree with, if you think i should rank them higher lower or any synergies you think of that i might have missed let me know i'm quite curious to know what you guys think and anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys again on the next one take care everyone and bye bye